This Hunter Stasis build makes you a Shattering God. With this newly updated Stasis build using some of the new seasonal artifact perks this season, we'll be able to run around spawning tons of Stasis Crystals all over the place, with a stupidly fast cooldown, and being able to shatter them for effective ag clear in all types of PvE content. And let me tell you guys, it's fun, but you know what's even better? Being able to yeet mini bosses across the map. It's great, and although Stasis has had its bad days of builds over the past few years since the great Stasis nerf, well, this build seems to have got slightly better to the point that it's now usable inside of endgame PvE. And yes, there are going to be times where you might die, you're not unkillable with this one, especially when you have annoying modifiers like the terrible ones in the coil, where you can't regen health if you're not literally kissing your teammates, and also the fact that its difficulty at its highest tier is pretty much the same difficulty as master content. So yeah, it's good. It's not perfect, but it is pretty strong, and also pretty fun to use too. Now before we move on, be sure to check out my sponsor Instant Gaming. They offer cheaper games for up to 90% off, and they even have much better deals available for pre-orders like the Final Shape expansion, if you want to pre-order and save yourself a bit more money. And if you don't fancy buying anything, why not join our free monthly giveaway for a chance to win any game of your choice. All the details and links are down below, but now guys, be sure to leave a rating, comment, subscribe and share for extra stasis crystals, and now let's shatter everything. Now, like every season, there are builds that get either weaker or stronger, have nerfs or buffs, or change completely, and this Stasis Hunter build is one build that had a slight buff this season because of the new artifact perks we have this season that affects the Stasis subclass. Which is why if you like this build, then you might like some of my other builds, which you can find down in the playlist linked below, and who knows, you might just find your new dream build in there. But with this one today, we're updating the Stasis Hunter Shadow Dive build, where you can just throw down Stasis Crystals everywhere, shatter them, and then repeat. And this is a stasis ability build so you will get your abilities back pretty fast because of the way we have this set up. Now it's been a while since I last covered a hunter stasis build here on the channel and the main reason for that is because of its underperformance in endgame content and although we do have one specific stasis build that makes endgame pve easier we won't be covering that one today we will be covering an updated stasis hunter build that allows you to shatter stasis crystals around ads for effective at clearing and actually to be honest this build does cause some serious damage too for what it has to offer and I I think it's just a great build to use in all types of content, whether you want to use this build in regular strikes to just kill ads easily without hassle, or you want to take it into endgame content where ads are a lot harder to kill. So wherever you decide to take this build, it will do a good job in any activity up to master content. I personally wouldn't use this in a GM though, but I do have a different stasis build I plan on making that will be suitable for GMs. Now the way you'll use this build is you would first start by throwing down a stasis grenade, you'll then jump in the air and shatter dive onto those stasis crystals. This in some cases, especially in endgame content where adds might not always die to the shatter, will spawn more stasis crystals and then slow or freeze nearby adds. From here you'll just run around destroying all the remaining crystals and using your other stasis abilities while running, and you want to be running around constantly because just moving will speed up your abilities recharge rate further. Now we're getting our abilities back faster, especially our grenade because of mostly two things, the Frosty's Exotic and the Whisper of Shards Fragment. In simple terms, the way this works is you'll throw down a stasis grenade and then shatter it, and you're going to get a buff called Improved Ability Regeneration, and this will boost our grenade's recharge rate. But by running around at the same time, you're increasing that recharge rate further because of the Exotic Armor Frosties, where you get increased grenade, melee and dodge regeneration while sprinting, and dodging increases your sprint speed. So just on its own, by shattering crystals and running around, you're going to get that next grenade ready within around 10 seconds, and in some activities where you have tons of ads shooting at you, and you have orbs to pick up, or other abilities to use and so on, you'll actually get that grenade even quicker as well. And the best part about using our grenade is that unlike a lot of other builds, you don't need to kill ads with it, or even damage ads, to get that back quicker. So even if you're bad with the build, or you somehow mess up, it won't make any difference. The only time you can really screw yourself over is if you don't shatter at least one of the 10 million crystals that spawn, or you accidentally yeet your grenade across across the map, where you can't shatter it for the ability recharge rate to kick in. But I mean, come on, is that really you? Anyway, with that said, the main downside of the build is survivability. Although it's good for ad clearing in most levels of difficulty, even with some ridiculous modifiers active, it isn't perfect for survivability. So if you want a build that keeps you alive more with health regen, then this build isn't going to be the one for you. But you will tank some of the damage that is thrown at you. And besides, taking damage is actually going to help us get those grenades back even faster, believe it or not, because of a few 
two fragments that we're using. There is one weird interaction you can do with this build if you want to take it a step further, and that's by using solar weapons with the build, and then using Flint Striker in the artifact that we have this season, so that you can become radiant when getting rapid precision hits or kills with our solar weapons. And although this will benefit the build with things like Kindling Trigger to scorch enemies, as well as Rays of Precision if you wanted to take that approach, you would instead want to become radiant because of the perk Torch, where while radiant, deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by strand and stasis debuffs. And since everything is getting slowed or frozen, we could not only give our allies that extra damage, but if we're going to be radiant as well, we can also get that extra damage on top, so it is worth running if you're using solar weapons. Now we're going to be using the Hunter Revenant Stasis subclass, and we will want to use the Gambler's Dodge so that we can get our melee back when dodging near enemies. We have the Withering Blade for our melee, and then a Glacial Grenade, which you will want to slot on. For Aspects, I have Touch of Winter, so that the Glacial Grenade as a Stasis Crystal and changes the formation. You can replace this with Grim Harvest if you want to, both Aspects are fine to use, but for your second one, you do want to have the Shatter Dive on, so that we can dive to the ground and break all crystals instantly, and in some cases, sending adds who didn't die, flying across the map, having a time of their life which is just fun to see. Anyway, for fragments, you want Whisper of Fishes to increase the damage and size of the burst of stasis when we destroy stasis crystals and defeat frozen targets. Whisper of Chains so that while we're near frozen targets or crystals, we take less damage from enemies. Always handy. Whisper of Torment so that we get grenade energy when we take damage. And Whisper of Shards, as I mentioned before, so shattering stasis crystals boosts our grenades recharge rate. In the artifact this season, you want to slot on Pillar of Ice, because defeating an encased combatant will spawn a stasis crystal, which is always good for the build. Then we have Hail of a Storm, so shattering encased targets and shards deal increased damage and slow nearby targets. This is actually pretty strong, it's probably the main reason this build is so good to use this season, so make sure you have this one on. But the last perk for stasis will be the Dragon's Bite, but if you are using this then you would want to use a stasis weapon. I'm using Deliverance, but there are plenty of other good weapons to use as well. All other perks in the artifact are just a bonus, but feel free to copy mine if you want to, this is the full artifact setup. Anyway, moving on for mods, there are a few mods that you want to use, and these are going to be two dynamos and a cypher mod in the helmet. Either run a stasis or solar cypher mod, it really depends what weapons you're using, but in the arms, I have one grenade kickstart mod, which you don't have to have on, it just helps a bit more. And then all the other mods are just a bunch of cooldown mods which you want to use. Prioritise mods that give more grenade energy back, so the uptime for those grenades will be higher. And that also includes getting discipline to 100 for the faster regen as well. Honestly guys, a really good build to have set up for the rest of Season of the Wish in Destiny 2 Lightfall. I'm rating this build an 8 out of 10 for its suitability in endgame content and overall effectiveness, but honestly not a bad build at all. If you didn't like this build then you guys know what to do, eat a few cookies and check out the playlist down below or on screen now for more. And until the next one, stay frosty and I'll see you soon. Peace out guys.